Postal Service Intelligent Mail requires all Intelligent Mail tray barcodes to be unique and present in eDocs. Sometimes mail does not fit into the trays it is supposed to, and additional tray tags are needed for what we call overflow trays. The Whittier Barcode Tagger and Window Books DatMail software offer a convenient way to provide unique tray tags for each tray and account for them in eDocs submitted to Postal 1. First, you will need to generate the tray tags for the overflow trays with the Whittier Barcode Tagger. To do this, you must configure your barcode tagger to produce 24-digit intelligent mail tray tags. If you already use other software to generate your tags, it is recommended you obtain a separate mailer ID from the Postal Service and use it to produce tags from the barcode tagger. This way, you will never duplicate the tags created by other systems. To print your overflow tags, you first select On Demand from the menu uh, by pressing 1. Then you press number 1 again to print tags. So the next step is to look at the tray tag for the tray that's going to overflow and need additional tags. So if we look at it, we'll see that there's a zip code in the upper right hand corner. And what we would do is enter that into the, uh, the tagger and press enter. Then we look and see what the um, pre-sort level is on the tag and press the number that corresponds with it. And at this point we now have a tray tag that uh, we can put on the additional tray. The next step will be scanning the tray tag into that mail. You can use an inexpensive barcode scanner connected to the USB port of the computer that that mail is connected to. You know, something like this Honeywell Metrologic would work fine and they're very, very inexpensive. So let's go and see how that process works. Here we are in that mail editor. Uh, first thing you want to do is select the job into which you want to scan these trays. Once you open the job, you want to go to the Container Summary File View. If this is not your default view, then what you want to do is look at the View menu and select it from that menu. Uh, when you get to the Container Summary File View, you go to the lower right and you'll see a button that says Scan Siblings. So you press that and up will come a scan window. At this point, you simply scan the tray tag that you generated on the Whittier barcode tagger and it will fill in the uh, barcode information and uh, create a uh, record in mail.dat to record the information for that uh, additional tray that you just uh, created. So you can keep on scanning and when you're all done you click on close. Just be sure to switch to a different job if some of these tags belong to different jobs. So when you're all done with this, uh, you know, you, by the way, let's take a look and see what one of these things looks like. You'll see that there's a heading called sibling, and you'll see a Y in that heading uh, if there happens to be a sibling. So if you wanted to take a look at these, we go up to the related menu, click on sibling containers, and it will give us a list of whatever trays we may have just uh, scanned. So what you'd want it for, you know, for that particular tray. Uh, if, for example, uh, you want to make this a one-foot tray, uh, you can change it to a one-foot tray. Again, this is a fairly common situation with sibling trays. The sibling becomes the same kind of tray as the original. So if the original is a two-foot tray, the sibling is a two-foot tray. But sometimes when you have overflow trays, many of those turn out to be one-foot. So if you really want to keep those things straight, you can do it by changing it to one-foot. So at this point we can close and uh, we are pretty much done. So I'd like to thank you for uh, attending this demonstration. To learn more, visit our website or call us at 800-524-0380 or visit us on the web at www.windowbook.com. You can also schedule a personalized demo at www.windowbook.com slash demo. Once again, thank you for your time.